Welcome back, my fantastic friends. This is another episode of The Master Paints the Masters. It's where we take a look at some past masters' work and I recreate it using my own techniques. And in this episode, we're going to look at Joseph Mallard William Turner, a great English watercolour artist. So let's have a look at some of his work. This is it. This is the beautiful New Stone at Plymouth Sounds. It's, it's an absolutely glorious watercolour from 1814 and it's so aggressive. Let's get onto the easel. Now in this canvas, it's been coated in black gesso and allowed to dry completely overnight. And then I've coated it all in various shades of, of blues and blacks. And down in the, the, the latter third of the painting, what I've hit it with is some, uh, some phthalo green and some phthalo blue. So we're gonna get a nice watery color effect down, down in the bottom part of the painting. And as always, I'll speed parts up where, where it becomes a little bit too repetitive and we will also look into some of uh, Turner's work and uh, talk a little bit about him as we go along creating this nice piece of art for you. Now these are oil paints. Now, Turner did a lot of painting in, in watercolours. Well, because I like where working with oils, I think uh, we should convert this one into a, a water from a watercolour into an oil painting. So I've hit the clouds here with a little bit of titanium white. And then I'm just blending the base of those clouds up with a nice dry brush and it'll blend into the blues and the blacks that are on the canvas. Joseph Mallard William Turner was born in, in 1775 on the 23rd of April, 1775. He lived, lived till 19th of December 1851 and he's known as uh, he's known just as William Turner and he was an English romantic painter he was also a printmaker but primarily he was a watercolour artist and you can see here I'm just just tickling out the sky with a little bit of a soft brush and we're going to come in different colours I've added a little bit of more black into that uh, into that white paint there just on a fan brush and we're just just letting the fan brush dance around we want an aggressive sky it's just gonna look like there's a big storm and we repeat the process of blending the base of those clouds out fluffing them up starting again just adding a different color each time that's all we're gonna do now Turner is known for his uh, is known for his expressive uh, colorizations, and imaginative landscapes and turbulent, often violent marine paintings. And that's exactly what I thought we should do today. I love painting the sea, but um, I, I've painted lots of different paintings in my time of the sea, usually with a big crashing wave. Sometimes I've done nice flat calm seas, but nothing quite like this. This is, this is an absolute beauty beyond belief. And when I saw this painting, when I started researching this series, I thought, I just have to paint this one. This is one of the greats. This is one of the great paintings out there. And again, we're just gonna vary the, 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 the shape and size of some of these clouds and the color going to the blacks. Every now and again, I might hit a little bit of yellow ochre just to, to brighten up the sky. Like it's really heavy, really heavy. The clouds are really heavy. Now, Turner was born in Covent Garden in London to a, a modest, low middle class family. And he lived in London all of his life and he, he, he still kept his Cockney accent and constantly avoided the trappings of, of success and fame. Here you can see I'm just putting a basic outline of where the muse stone's going to be. And then we're just going to paint some some clouds around that. We don't we don't have to do that. I just wanted to give a guide, just a rough guide of where the mule stone's going to be. Then we're going to come back in and blend it, tickle it, tickle these clouds out, fluff them up, set them into the sky. That's all. I'll put another one, a darker one there. I'll push the lighter ones right back into the painting. I want to thank you guys for watching as well and coming up with your suggestion, suggestions. They're, they're absolutely amazing. And I, I couldn't do this without you. So if you've got any more input, please leave a comment below. It, it, it really does help out. And 
I can go away and research it and do a few paintings and, and come back and, uh, and, and give it a go. So your input is absolutely vital. Who would you like me to paint next? It's, it's, the power's in your hands. Power is in your hands. Now, Turner's talent was recognised early on in his life and uh, some say that he was an artistic genius. The influential artistic critic uh, um, John Ruskin described him as an artist who could most sternly and truthfully measure the moods of nature, which is just fantastic, isn't it? From an, uh, from an early age as well, Turner was a childhood prodigy. He studied at the Royal Academy of Arts from 1789. At the young tender age of just 14, that's, that's crazy, that crazy. And one year later, he exhibited his first, uh, his first work there, just at the age of 15. So again, we're just pushing some more clouds into this sky. We're building up a lot of paint here. It's gonna be really thick, this painting. And we're just pushing in some more, some more clouds, different colored clouds, just to give uh, a, a, an impression or a, a feel that there's going to be lots of movement in the sky. Sometimes when, I, when I've painted paintings before we can get a, a flat dead old sky and then other times we can paint them with a lot of character in and, and this one has certainly got a lot of character into it. You can stare at it and pick a favourite spot and then come back an hour or so later and have a look at it again and be like, oh, I didn't see that bit before, I've got a new favourite spot. So we're just lightly fluffing up, lightly fluffing up, and we'll just take the brush marks out of this now. There we go. And then here is where as light beams are gonna be. So we'll just get some titanium white on the paintbrush and we'll just pull in one straight line. Just like that. And it looks like light has come straight through the sky. And there we go. I don't wanna overwork this. I want those light beams to be, be quite strong. If we work it and work it and work it, it'll go away into the background, it'll, it'll leave us, and we, we don't want that. So there's just good enough. Now on the fan brush, I've mixed a little bit of yellow ochre, black, and a touch of white, and I'm just fluffing in a nice, nice little cloud here. It's, it's a warm cloud, but it's obviously in a cool, cool background, and it'll give a, an impression of power you know, this, this storm cloud is, is, it holds a lot of water and a lot of mischief. And we can vary the colours backwards and forwards, add a little bit of more black, add a bit more yellow ochre. And we're going to come back up here. And this is just a bit more white, a lot more white, in fact, on this top half. And then we'll just blend that out, smooth that out, play that out put a few little stringy clouds up here as well. And these, these different shaped clouds, the ones that are just like little floatery bits of string, they'll, they'll push everything back and it'll give another dimension into the sky. And then we've got a clean dry brush and we're just gonna merge all these colors together. Just merge them together using the corner of a dry, clean fan brush. During the early years of his life, Turner, he, uh, he also served as an architect and a draftsman and uh, he, uh, he earned a steady income from, also from his commissioned paintings and sales which due to his troubled contrary nature he often begrudgingly accepted payment. <laughs> okay we're just fluffing this big sky up here now. Just little fluffy things and this is on a nice dry brush it's got to be dry. What I do is I'll, I'll wash the brush and I'll, I'll beat it till <laughs> with an inch of its life and, um, and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll wipe it across some paper towels. That way I get them really dry. I do not want to get any sort of paint thinner up here onto this. I will just mix mud and we don't want that. Really nice dry brush. And to the bottom of this cloud just like we're colouring in a cartoon, I suppose, we're going to put a little bit of a black outline just here and there and there and here. And then we can come, come back in, put a few more dark, black, stringy clouds every now and again. 
then we can fluff this lot up. Yeah, we put a couple across those those sunlight rays and that pushes that back into the painting. And then we'll blend it all up again. With that dry brush. Nice and dry. Here we go. Happy days. Happy days, folks. Happy days. I do hope you're enjoying this episode and the series in fact it's been it's been really lovely painting all these paintings for you. We've done some fabulous work push me to the limit but it's 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 really been, been really worthwhile I've really enjoyed it and I really enjoy reading all your comments and your input so it's, it's really important to me that, that you do give me your thoughts and your input we're adding another layer here now so on a fan brush there there's a white titanium white paint we we'll add another little little layer to that now usually when I'm painting normal paintings for YouTube, uh, I, I don't have this much time, but because I've allowed myself to speed up certain parts of this film, um, I, I, I can add extra dimensions in and do a lot more. That's why we there seems to be a lot, a lot more going on. But again, this is revert back to the original painting of, um, of what Turner did. It's a violent violent marine scene this is exactly what it is there we he spent a third of his time just on the sky but what a sky that looks that looks chaos up there doesn't it that looks chaotic I'm very angry now there was an headland up here so with just a tiny bit of I'm just using straight sap green and Every now and again I'll tap a little bit of brown paint into that. But it'll pick the colours up that's underneath. And we'll put a little headland down. It was only small, you could hardly see it. And then on top of that, especially where the sun's going to hit, touch a little bit of the cad yellow. Just put a little light spot. Just right where that light is zinging right onto it. There, just like that. Now Turner opened his own gallery in 1804 and became a professor of um, a perspective at the academy where he worked. And he, he lectured there till, he, till 18, 1828. And in a time before photographs, Turner tra traveled and toured Europe, returning with massive amounts of sketches from which he could work from and produce some amazing, amazing, pictures from and we're just blocking the new stone there so this is a bit of dark paint just putting that in so it's, it's the browns we hit a little bit of white paint in that as well that's okay come back and put a lot of different colors on there now we'll put a little water line now we know where his mule stone lives, I'm going to put a water line. You see how that really separates the land from the sea? It's like magic happens. It always excites me when I see that. It's like magic happens. And then we'll continue the water line all the way along. Right to the mule stone. And then across through to the other side. Nice and straight and flat. Got to be a perfectly straight horizon, especially on the sea. <laughs> okay, right, so we'll just keep touching now. We'll put some white paint here, just living on the edge of the knife. That's all it is. Just a little bit of white paint, just pushing it into the canvas. It's not liquid white, it's just normal titanium white paint. I want it firm and I want it pushed into the canvas, actually, as hard as I can, pushing it into the fabric. And I can come back, gently rub it in. Okay, let's work on some highlights on this big old stone. So just like you would do a normal mountain. Very gentle, no pressure. And this is a mixture of yellow ochre, burnt umber. And we'll get some other colours thrown in there as well, just for good luck. We want a lot of different colours on this. Remember the beauty. There'll be seaweed, there'll be grasses, there'll be... It's a huge stone, I believe, in, in real life. There we go. Come back, a little 
little bit more colour. Yeah. I'll just work this till we get it how we want it. Just turn the travel uh, widely throughout Europe, starting in France and Switzerland in 1802. He studied in Paris in that year and he made many visits to, to Venice. But an important supporter of his work came from, from a friend called Walter Ramsden Fox of, uh, of Farnley Hall, which is near Otley, <laughs> up here in Yorkshire. And the pair became close friends. And Turner first visited Otley in, uh, in 1797, just, just 22 years old, uh, when he commissioned, well, when commissioned to paint uh, some watercolours of the area. He was so attracted by Yorkshire's beauty, he kept returning throughout his career. Probably even, probably even, travel through my town. There we go. My, my, my town runs straight through, well, the Great North Road runs straight through my town. The main road, or once upon a time, it was the main road from London to, the, to Edinburgh. <laughs> okay, so back to this big old dry brush, and we just want to diffuse the base of that mule stone right down at the bottom and again some of this will be in the sea some of this we won't see <laughs> and we can come back here with some, some white paint now now we've diffused it just a touch of white paint hardly any hardly any paint and this will give the indication of, of foamy things spraying and smashing against this big old stone out here in the sea this this big stone, it, it, it's claimed so many lives throughout the, throughout the centuries. It really is, uh, it's, it's a menace apparently, but it's, it's an iconic, it's an iconic um, landmark in the sea. Uh, it is, it's a, it's a bit of menace to, uh, to old seagoers way back when, and it possibly still is today. Let's give that little you stone a nice little friend out here in the sea. So we'll pop another one in. Just like that, just a little bit darker than the original. Cut off the base. And then we can come back in and we can put some spray and splashes and all sorts right around the base of that one. And that'll set that little stone back into the water. Turner's imagination is, is or was sparked by shipwrecks. Like I said, this one, will, this old stone, will have claimed a fair few in its time. It's also, um, it was also inspired by fires, including the burning of Parliament in 1834, which, which Turner himself witnessed firsthand. And uh, being the artist, he took out a sketch pad and sketched a few ideas, and went back and, and painted a fabulous watercolor from that. He also was, he also was really impressed by natural phenomena like sunlight and storms and rain and fog, and of course, obviously, the violent power of the sea, which you kind of get here. Now, with some titanium white on a little round brush, all we're doing is putting some wobbly little wavy lines. And this will pick up, this will pick up the colour that's that's right under the canvas right under the paint, sorry. So I'll have that blues and thalo greens on there. And then with the dry fan brush, we can come back and just start teasing these, this white line down to the next white line, creating, creating the trough of the wave. And it's important that you don't go towards the next white line, and go into the next white line, the next wave, what we'll do is start teasing these little waves out. Keep going and keep going and keep going until we get some nice little waves going. Or big waves, violent waves, aggressive waves out here. And the more we rub this, the more of that colour underneath it will start to show through. And if we need to put a little bit more white on there, now we know where as major waves are 
it can come back and put some more white paint on. It's that easy. And then we'll just fill this area up here. Just like that. Just with the fan brush. Now this painting was painted in, uh, in 1814, like I mentioned. So just a couple of years prior to that, in 1811, a publisher approached Turner uh, within a, with a proposal to publish a print series entitled The Picturesque Views of the Southern Coast of England and, uh, and in this watercolour in which the waves are so accurately depicted and their frothy white crests have been blown away by the strong wind it appeared, it appeared in a six part series published in 1815 eventually you'll see a ship that I paint but on the original painting, you'll see a ship with rigging, and it's absolutely wave, you know, it's labouring in the waves of the, in the heavy swell. And obviously, the, the clouds are up in the sky, which is highlighted by those bright beams of, uh, of light, shafts of sunlight bursting through. It really is a formidable painting, such a pleasure to try and recreate. The ship that you see in Turner's painting is probably a, a naval vessel and it's dwarfed by the dreaded Mewstone. This dramatic natural feature which lies on the eastern end of Plymouth Sounds in, uh, in Wembury Bay is notorious. It's claimed many lives over the centuries. But during the summer of 1813, Turner spent most of his time traveling along the coast in, or filling out sketchbooks with his observations. And he completed the new stone painting in 1814. Crazy, isn't it, that long ago? When you look at it, it still looks like a photograph. Of course, these are times before photographs, so if you wanted to see any of these sites, and most of the people in Britain never really traveled far from the town, You'd have to go see a painting in a, in a gallery somewhere to get an idea, especially from the exotic places, you know, like Paris and Venice. So I've got a really little thin amount of white on the little script brush here. It's really thin, it's liquid white. If it's not flowing, because they've got a really lot of paint on it, on this canvas now, if it's not flowing, then I may add just a touch of thinner as well to that, just to let it slide and what we're doing is creating some little foamy cracks and creaks in the wave. I don't want too many, but just enough to give a, a good indication that there's a lot going on in this sea. This sea's got to be respected. There we go. At some point in the paint I'll come back with a couple of different coloured lines and put those in as well. Just the same, it's exactly the same style as painting a twig on a tree. That's how it is. Lover's boat there, I think. And this is a great way of painting. With no tracings or no copies, I've just looked at the painting and thought, we'll go for it. We'll go for it. So let's start work on the, the big old ship. So the little round brush again. The dark colour, we're just going to block in a basic ship shape. And it's not going to be, it's not going to be in a good state in this ship. <laughs> there we go. We've done the, the back of the ship, the front of the ship, so the front bow, back stern, that's it, eh? I think we've talked about this before, folks, haven't we? <laughs> now, Turner, he was a, he was a lively character. He, he was a controversial figure throughout his career. And even though he didn't marry, he did have two illegitimate daughters. Um, and he became, he became more pessimistic as he got older, especially after the death of his, his father, which after the death of his father, who he did live with for some, some time, he, um, his outlook on life began to deteriorate and he, he fell into bouts of depression. His gallery uh, fell into disrepair and neglect. 
but his art, his art intensified. An interesting fact of Turner's was he was an habitual user of snuff, which is ground up uh, tobacco. Uh, in 1838, the King of France, Louis-Philippe I, presented Turner with a gold snuff box, which is quite, uh, it's quite, quite crazy, yeah. He also was quite, uh, well, very, very private, intensely private and eccentric and reclusive. And in 1841, Turner rowed a boat into the Thames so he could not be counted uh, as present at any of the properties uh, in that year's census. <laughs> he didn't want, he didn't want the state to count him in, apparently. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just talking now. I'm just working on this boat, so we're going backwards and forwards. We're coming back in with a little rigger brush there. And we're going to really strengthen these outlines out. So to get the paint flowing off the, off the little rigger brush, the little script brush, we've got to really thin it down with some thinners. And then we can work on these masts now. Remember, we've scraped in this basic guideline with his knife. Cut through the rigging, put the masts in, come back. There, we're just going to keep playing with this boat till we get it looking right. That's all we need to do. And though Turner's, uh, and though Turner's bread and butter was watercolour paintings, he also worked with oils and uh, this had an influence in the f with the other French people, the French Impressionists, the artists, uh, particularly Claude Monet. So, so Claude Monet learnt a thing or two off the of the great British painter Turner, which is which is it's amazing, isn't it? Now, just highlighting the the edge of this boat with a little bit of bright red, just to set it apart. Just like so. In the latter years of Turner's life, he lived with a widow, Sophia Booth. They lived in Chelsea, but he basically lived in the last what, five or six years uh, in squalor, and he suffered from poor health. On the 19th of December, 1851, Joseph Millard William Turner died in London, aged 76, from cholera at his home of Sophia in Chelsea. He is buried in St Paul's Cathedral near other notable artists. Now you can see me here, I'm just scraping in the top part of those masts with the knife. We'll come in and we'll put some, some cross beams on. These would hold the sails. I suppose they've pulled the sails up under the stormy conditions. Turner left a small fortune, which he he would uh, after his death he left a small fortune, which he wanted to support uh, some sort of charity, I suppose, called, called Decayed Artists. It'd be some sort of gallery for his work, but due to disagreements, this did not happen. And 22 years later, after his death, the British Parliament passed an act allowing paintings to be lent to other museums outside of London, and and this was the beginning of a process of scattering Turner's paintings, which ultimately ultimately he wanted to be kept together. Now it's said that some Turner paintings have a value between uh, 30 and 45 million pounds. And he, he did, he, he left behind uh, more than 550 oil paintings, 2,000 watercolors, and more than 30,000 other pieces of art on paper. Which is eye watering, isn't it? A true master. A true master. Now I'm just tickling the bottom of this boat up, see around it, a little bit more white paint, some more froth, some more foamy things. We'll come back in here, like I've said before, with a this is this is phthalo green, thinned really down with a with a paint thinner, we can put some some little crashy, wavy, foamy things happening in between all this lot, in between all these waves. Looks pretty violent, doesn't it, out there? Looks pretty violent. So let me know, folks, have you got another, another past master that you want me to explore?
that we can do that we can have fun painting if you have just let me know just let me know you can see what we can do and if you've enjoyed this painting if you enjoyed the series please drop me a like a thumbs up please subscribe it means the world to me and leave me an absolute fantastic comment as we sign this little one down here so I thinned out some red paint and I just initial this down in the bottom corner just like so there we go let's get a closer look at the boat now we've finished there we go so there you can see the boat approaching the Mewstone and this is them both together let me know your thoughts folks until next time, do stay safe. See you all later. Happy days. <laughs>